وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد We were speaking about the مظاهر دنو الهمة The phenomenon of low aspiration We mentioned uh, six And inshallah ta'ala today we're going to do the uh, seventh بإذن الله الكريم The seventh one is التكلف والتصنع To be pretentious تكلف and تصنع It means a person wants to overdo something Exaggerate in doing something You find some people لا يثبت على حال He's not consistent upon one situation And ولا يهدأ له بال And he's never focused on one thing. And the reason for this is تكلفه وتصنعه He has this pretentious, grandiose personality where he exaggerates, overdoes things. وتشبعه بما ليس فيه And he pretends to be what he really isn't. And he claims for himself ودعائه ما ليس عنده He claims for himself that which he doesn't have. So sometimes that person يَجْتَذِبُهُ سَمْتُ الصَّالِحِينَ Sometimes the righteous people, uh, they impress him. And so he goes that direction. He becomes like them. He imitates the righteous people. He impersonates Islamic figures. He dresses Islamically. So he wears the clothing of those great scholars. And he appears to be like them. And sometimes what happens? And sometimes he gets overtaken by the path of those who are exaggerant, those who are uh, not righteous and not pious. He takes their path. So he goes and then starts wearing that type of clothing. And he then abandons the situation he was upon before. Then sometimes he gets amazed by the ulama. He then wears the shimag, he wears the thob, he puts the miswak in his pocket. Sometimes he gets amazed by an artist, a rapper. And so he starts to pretend to be like that rapper. Tries to wear those clothings, talk like them. Sometimes that he gets amazed by a football player. And then he goes and he starts to pretend to be like that football player. This individual doesn't have one, like one consistent, continuous situation. Sometimes manners and good etiquettes overcomes him. And then he goes towards that direction. And sometimes this. This all, brothers and sisters, munafil lil hazmi wa ulul himma. It goes against high aspiration, lofty aspiration. Falaqilu, the smart individual. La yatasanna'u wa la yatakallafu. Wa la yatashabba'u bima laysa fihi. The person who has high aspiration, lofty aspiration, you won't find them in any way, shape or form pretending to be what they're not. They're not pretentious. They know their situation. They know themselves properly. So they don't pretend to be what they're not. A Muslim, it shouldn't come from him. Or he shouldn't be karishatin fi falah. He shouldn't be like a leaf in a windy day out there, tossed and turned by the wind. يُقَلِّبُهَا المجتمع. The society is changing you. When the society approves a thing, you are with the society. 
And if the society approve of something else, then we are with the society. Do not, it's not for a Muslim. لا ينبغي لمسلم أن يكون كريشة في فلا يقلبها المجتمع ظهرا لبطن إذا استحسن أمرا استحسنه وإذا استقبح أمرا استقبحه. That if the society approves approves something, they recommend something, they like something, it becomes a trend. Then you think this is it. That's what's right. That is what everybody should be doing. And then you go and you do it. That same thing. Society comes and says, this is not good. This is bad. It's not for... And then you follow society in it. That is not what a Muslim should be. And that shouldn't be the characteristics of a person who has high aspiration. That isn't the characteristic of a person who has high aspiration. وَلِذَلِكَ the Prophet وسلم, in the ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the Prophet, قُلْ سَيْ Muhammad. ما أسألكم عليه من أجر I do not ask reward from you وما أنا من المتكلفين and I am not a pretentious individual the Prophet is saying this عليه الصلاة والسلام عبد الله بن عمر رضي الله تعالى عنهما may Allah be pleased with him and his father he said نهينا عن التكلف الإمام البخاري narrated this we were prohibited from being pretentious we were, pre- we were told don't because it's not the characteristics of a Muslim, let, let alone the characteristics of a Muslim who has high aspiration. وَلَيْسَ مَعْنَى ذَلِكَ And I do not mean by this, أَلَّا يَسْأَ الْمَرْءُ إِلَىٰ تَكْمِيلِ نَفْسِهِ I don't mean by this that the person shouldn't go out there and complete themselves and rectify their situation. وَارْتِقَاءِ بِهِمَّتِهِ I don't mean that. I don't mean this person uh, stays consistent upon the mistake that they're upon or the misguidance that they're upon. No, in no way or shape or form am I saying that. But what I am saying is, وَإِنَّمَا الْمَقْصُودُ أَنْ يَثْبُتَ الْإِنسَانُ عَلَى مَبْدَئِهِ الْحَقِّ What I'm saying is that the person should be consistent and continuous in his principles. The true Islamic principles that you've adopted and truly so, you have, and you're right on this. Don't change because of society, because of peer, peer, peer pressure. And don't be somebody who jumps from one to another. Today you're upon something, tomorrow you're upon. That's why the great statement comes about. Stay away from changing don't be someone who changes wherever situation that you're in if you're in a society where the norms is this and it goes directly against your religion you adopt it because society have chosen this and this is the sad reality that we're seeing people who are practicing the religion people who are even meant to be the du'at the callers to al-islam the propagators of Al-Islam are saying to people, society has chosen this. The majority want this. So because of that, we should all adhere to it. We should all accept it. No. We hold on to what is truth. And because we're in a society or a, or a land where this falsehood or this corruption has become widespread, we live in it hating it from our hearts, condemning it, whatever, condemning it, whatever opportunity and chance that we get. But we never, in no way, shape or form, do we um, accept this. And, accept, uh, and, and, and let alone uh, propagate or speak for it or go out there and uh, rally for it and you know, lobby for it. No, we don't do that. So this point, inshallah ta'ala, is be a person who sticks to the truth. Aynama can, wherever it is. Stick with the haq, wherever it is. And don't be a person who jumps from one to the other. This is a sign of low aspiration. It really goes against the definition that we gave at the beginning of this series of what high aspiration is. The eighth, inshallah ta'ala, uh, the eighth um, phenomenon of low aspiration is al-ighraq 
في المظهرية الجوفاء plunging uh, into the outer appearance there are some people whose only their only concern is their outer appearance and the way they look from outside and this happens in many different ways it occurs in many different ways from some of the ways that it happens is al madhariyatu fil afrah the appearance and the outlook in weddings that people uh, throw parties and uh, wedding wedding ceremonies and وَمَا إِلَى ذَلِكَ You find that people fall into الْإِسْرَافُ فِي الْوَلَائِمِ Extravagant expenditure uh, of wealth. Um, also, uh, women go all going overboard in beautification. Also, the clothing that is worn, لُبْسُ الشُّهْرَةِ Clothings that are extravagant. يعني this cloth has been brought from another country 10,000 I remember subhanallah uh, a wedding that a woman was going to wear clothes it was rented it wasn't bought for 10,000 billahi alayk for that wedding the clothing that she's going to wear for that day was worth 10,000 UK pounds 10 pounds sterling you pay 10,000 just for one night for her to wear it for her wedding and the next morning she has to take it back so spending ten thousand pounds just for one night to wear a wedding dress, and the next morning you have to return it. This, without a doubt, is lubsu shukra, and it is without a doubt ifratun nisa ifit tajamul. Is women going overboard in beautifying? And this, without a doubt, again comes from the taqalidul kafirat, imitating the disbelievers. So the whole entire. Yani, wedding, what's understood from it is the outer appearance. It's not, no one cares about whether these two people have Islamic ethics. No one looks at, or no one gives importance to um, whether these two individuals are compatible for one another in terms of, uh, you know, their, their, their religious. Uh, no, it doesn't matter. He's wealthy. She's uh, from an ideal family background. They get together, they get married. Two, three months they spend marriage together and it goes down the drain. Really because of what? al madhariyatu fil afrah People are just concerned about the outer appearance and the outlook. And this without a doubt again goes against the concept of high aspiration. And when a man marries a woman or a woman gets married to a man, she's looking at a person who's going to complete her religion and he's looking at someone who's going to complete his religion. Marriage is about the, 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 the second half of you. Yani your other half. See, the, your, this person is your other half. This person is going to complete you in terms of your religion. It's going to this person is going to complete you in terms of your worldly affairs. They're going to be there for you. You're going to grow together. You're going to learn things together. Yani, the aspiration like that is not there. You're going to nurture and up, raise the next generations of ulama and students of knowledge. And this is what our mission in life here is, inshallah ta'ala. رَبَّنَا هَبْلَنَا مِنْ أَزْوَاجِنَا وَذُرِّيَّاتِنَا قُرَّةَ أَعْيُنْ وَجَعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ إِمَامًا And you're looking at this partner as a person who's going to, inshallah ta'ala, bring you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That this person is going to be a means to Jannah. That this person is going to be the mother of the next ulama that you are uh, going to bring into this world. That you're both going to bring into this world. This is the aspiration Islam wants. That is what the ulama and the people of knowledge, that's the way they looked at a marriage. They looked at it as uh, the rights. You see, the ulama, when they speak about the rights that the child has on his parents, you know, there's rights that children have on their parents and the parents have on their children. The rights that the child has on his parents is that each parent chooses a noble, righteous partner for a mother for him. And you have the, child, the son or the daughter that you have. The rights that they have on you is that, Dad, why did you choose this type of mom for us? Who's smoking, who's cheating, who's lying, who has no Islamic ethics. And the same with the mother. The children, 
the rights that they have on you is that you make their father someone who can be an example for them. A man who's smoking, he's cheating, he's, and he's zani, he is yeah, an alcoholic, he is someone who doesn't pray the salah, somebody who drinks the mukhaddarat, alcohol, and he eats qad and whatnot. That is you not fulfilling your rights as a parent because all you cared about when you got married is al madhariya the outer appearance of this person. How tall is he? How was his skin complexion? And what type of tribe is he from? Things that I'm not saying you shouldn't look at. I'm not in way, no way, shape or form saying these things should not be looked at. But what I'm saying is that your focus only becomes this and nothing except this. This harms you. It harms your progeny. It harms uh, your even your mental health. It harms your mental state. That this type of person is going to be your second half. The second way that this uh, al madhariya occurs is al madhariya to fil maraqib. Some people they are concerned about the the riding beast that they have. فَتَجِدُ مِنَ النَّاسِ مَا يَتَظَاهَرُ بِالتِّجَارَةِ. You find some people who you know present themselves as a businessman. فَيَشْتَرِي أَفْرَاقَ الرَّأْلَ الْمَرَاكِبِ. So he goes and he buys excessive cars. You know, and he he gets an exp ex expensive watch. He'll get a expensive things just so when he goes and sits with particular type of people they see him as a rich person but deep down he knows he's got nothing he wants to sit with the big boys so what does he do he gets himself a rolex watch but that's he still has to pay the money for it he gets himself an expensive car he still has to pay the money for it all of this is because of what al madhariya to fil maraqib outer appearance just all it is I'll suffer, but I just need to look good. I don't need people to know this. Or for example, some people, they travel to another country and they'll show themselves, they go to a particular country and they'll go to an expensive hotel, uh, but they're real, uh, and, and they'll show the people that they've spent a night, for example, in Burj Khalifa, for example, or they've spent a night in central London, in one of the expensive hotels in central London, uh, Marriott or whatever it is. So what does he do? Or what does she do? She takes pictures, but really they're, they're just crashing with a friend for that night or a cousin who's already there. Or It's not you, who's, but you give that impression to society. You give that impression on social media. You feed the people that narrative that you are well off. You have it, nothing to worry about. Some people even rent a car just for that particular day, just so they can record it on this Instagram or what do you call it? Uh, the YouTube, وما إلى ذلك المظهرية في المراكب. So he does all of that حتى يشار إليه بالبنان. So people can point at you and say, أخي, you know what that brother's well off, man. MashaAllah, Allah مبارك. He's got it all. Or oh, that sister, well, she's well off. Allah مبارك. It's all about the outer appearance. This is a sign of low aspiration. A person who, he's, it's not about the heart and his side. I mean, the person who has high aspiration doesn't really care about the outer appearance. You tend to see that. He looks scuffy, doesn't, uh, yeah, I mean, doesn't really care too much. I'm not saying, and inshallah, I'm going to speak about that in more details. But he doesn't really make it his ultimate goal, his outer appearance and the way he looks. No way, shape or form. Look at the ulama. Go on YouTube right now. Look at the senior scholars like Sheikh Ibn Ubaz. For example, look how he looks, the way he's dressed. This is a mufti of the Mamlak al Arabi Saudiya. Sheikh Ibn Baz Ta'ala can extend his hand to get all the wealth there is, Ta'ala, that is needed. He can get it if he wants to. He's got the ear of every ruler uh, and, and every uh, yani countries. He's, he's able to speak to countries and rulers of countries he can talk to, let alone his own country. Ta'ala. Look at him. Check it up, you can see it. Like Sheikh Muhammad ibn Salih al Uthaymin, rahimahullah ta'ala, and the way he looked, his appearance. And it, that, you know, it's, it's, it's just the way they are. They don't care about the madhariya. They have their hearts, on the other hand, somewhere else. They're looking at somewhere else. Al Alama Muhammad al Amin al Shankiyatiyo, the great Imam of our time, he died recently, rahimahullah ta'ala, not too long ago. 
He has written a kitab called Adla'ul Bayan Fi Yidah Al-Qur'an Bil Qur'an. He's got many works. And he's a teacher, Sheikh Ibn Baz, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. Sheikh Muhammad Amin al Shankiyatiyu, an Imam, they said he memorized Lisan al Arab. He memorized the dictionary, Lisan al Arab, the 10 volume book. And it's a dictionary, he memorized it. And he had a strong brain, and he's hived of things were just on another level. He was never seen anything like that. They said he came to Mamlak al Arabi Saudiya, he came to Saudi Arabia to do Hajj. And when he came to do Hajj, he went to Medina and he visited Medina and they saw him. And they said, How about? If we speak to the ruler, Malik Faisal, and we tell him, Faisal, there's a man who is like, we haven't seen anyone like this. We've not seen anyone like this. This man is like, he's reading from something. He's hivr and he's faham and everything. Some, this man, we have to keep him in, 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 the, in the kingdom. So they, 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 they said to him, uh, stay. We've spoken to the ruler for you. Stay, don't go anywhere. And he stayed on that. He stayed, they, and he became a professor in the Jama'ah in Medina, uh, sorry, Jama'ah Islamiyah. He even taught Sheikh Minah Uthaymin, rahimahullah ta'ala. They said he would come to the haram in Medina and he would sit down on a chair and he would do tafsir of an ayah and he would bring out Masail Nahwiyah, Masail Sarfiyah. He would bring out Masail yani, Fiqhiyah, Masail Hadithiyah. Yani, he would bring Masail yani, Nadira, Nadira Jiddan. To the extent some scholars they said Abu Abdullah al qurtubis tafsir Hakam al Quran, they said he has it, he had it chip He م, يعني, nearly memorized the tafsir of Qurtubi. He used to read it. Sometimes paragraphs you read it word for word, verbatim, no changing. And from memory. Rahimahullah ta'ala. And the Shanaqita, the scholars from Rutania, I like that, the memorization. With that being said, Muhammad al Amin al was said. That if he ever came to a shop to buy something and someone was to study product and he would give the person the money but he wouldn't know the, 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 the currency properly. He wouldn't know. He wouldn't know the, the different real. So what he said, he said that he would stick out his hand and he would give it to the owner of the shop and say, I don't know what this money is like. Can you take what's yours? And they would say, this is five real, this is this, this. I can Question, a person whose memorization is like that, his understanding of the religion is like that, he's a teacher of the senior scholars that we know, like Sheikh Ibn Ubaz and others, he's, he's uh, like that when it comes to the dunya. Imagine that. that is, isn't that something that, that shocks you? It's because of the concept of him ma'aliyah. He didn't take time out to memorize currencies and money. You see, he spent his energy and his time on that which is going to benefit him. Compare that to us today. And the way we are today, we and we read and we we study and we learn things that have no importance for us. So we've got n information in our heads and minds that are worthless. It has no value for us. What are we going to do with this information? Nothing. Isn't it better that instead of learning that information that you're looking at and studying that stuff, that you go and you just read two or three ayahs a day, or you memorize a hadith, or you learn one mas'ala fiqhiyah, or Mas'ala Aqadiyya, or Mas'ala Usuriya, or Mas'ala Nahwiya. Yani you learn something that's going to get you close to Allah on the Day of Judgment. The reason this comes is because of al madhariya All it is for us is the outer appearance. I need to look intellectual. I need to look like I'm rich and I'm well off. I need to look like I am, you know, my wedding was the real deal. And people need to know. Because when people see my wedding and they come, they're going to think I'm cheap. You know, the guy just took me. What ma ila that? Also, al madhariyah to fil madaris. That's the third way in which this outer appearance comes about. This extreme observation of the outer appearance, just concerned about the outer appearance. It comes by way of al madhariyah to fil madaris. You find an institute, you find a school. All it has concerned itself with is the outer outer appearance and the way the madrasa looks, the beauty of it, the 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 uh, tables and the way it looks. Um, the uh, uh, the uh, technology that is used, yeah, and it, the color coordinate, coordinates of the table and the chair and the, the, the painting that was put on the ceiling and the floor and, and it, all of that is being given consideration. Al inayat al zaida al kharijat an tawriha bil umurat bil umurat al madhariya, the outer appearance. 
going extravagant and excessive into that. Some of the schools that you go to, some of the Islamic institutions that you look at, you will find that in them. Al-ihtimam kullahu aw dullahu munsabbun ala al-umur shakliya. The whole entire school is really concerned with the outer appearance. The red and the black and the blue and the red and the orange co coordinates. This is okay, that's it. Excessively I'm talking about. Going overboard in that. And I do not mean by this. I'm not saying these things are not important. I'm not. But what is required is that everything is placed in its right place. وَأَنْ يَكُونَ الْإِهْتِمَامُ مُنْصَبًّا عَلَى تَرْبِيَةِ الطُّلَّابِ عِلْمِيًّا وَخُلُوقِيًّا وَسُلُوكِيًّا But it's, what is really important is the school gives more importance to what? Nurturing the students, their knowledge, nurturing their manners, nurturing their, their zuhd and their wara' and their relationship in this, the way they look at this dunya and the way they live their life in this dunya. That should be the mihwar. That should be the ihtimam. That's the di that's it should be musab. It should be placed in that. And then everything else can follow after that. If number one, their primary goal is to nurture the students, their knowledge, their manners, their etiquettes. That's number one. After that, if the beauty of the center and the way it looks, you add that onto it, no problem. Look at the uh, Islamic University of Medina, for example. You go there, you're not going to see like any. You don't see that. Simple. It's not that. You go to the University of Azhar, for example. You don't tend to find that. Simple, easy. You go to, for example, the uh, places we, we studied and we learned the uh, ilm from. And we sit on the floor. The, some of the, school, the places that we studied that they didn't have carpets. So that the center... It's sand, so you're sitting on the floor. And in the Quran, it's not written even on papers. And it's not written on, in books. It's written on, you know, wooden uh, with ink. The student washes his ear board, yani the wooden board, and he cleans it. He uses ink. That which is given consideration is that this child, um, his brain, his heart. When he goes into society, what type of person is he going to be? Consideration is given that. I'm going to stop there, inshallah ta'ala. Anything which I have said that was wrong or incorrect is from me and Shaytan and Allah and His Messenger are free from it. Subhanakallah wa bihamdi ashadu wa la ilaha illallah astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. How can you do a two second action right now that will give you a share of the reward of everything we're doing on this YouTube channel? Simple. Like this video and click subscribe. Why? It will allow YouTube to recommend our videos to other users and imagine the huge amount of reward that could be waiting for you on the day of judgment if you did that with a sincere intention of spreading the deen of Allah. You'll be rewarded for every single person who benefits from one of our videos as a result of your like or subscribe. That's an easy two second action that you definitely don't want to miss out on. Do it now. Click like and subscribe and don't forget to make that intention.